Alright everyone, one of the most powerful yet cryptic utilities built into Mac OS X is the terminal. This program allows you to interact with OS X's underlying Unix layer. And it's because of Unix that OS X has inherited some of the security and stability improvements to an operating system that's been under development for over 30 years. Today I'm going to give a brief overview of some fundamental commands and tips to know when working with the terminal so you can get a general feel for the power and utility of working from the command line. By default, opening a terminal window puts you in your home directory. And your home directory is where things such as your iTunes music is stored, photo booth pictures, your iPhoto library, and iMovie projects. All of that is stored within your home directory in Mac OS X. So coming back again to the terminal window, if you've ever used the command prompt in Windows-based systems, this should be somewhat familiar to you. The only difference is that the individual commands are going to be different than the commands that you're going to type in on an equivalent Windows box, and that's because this is running on top of a variation of BSD units. One of the simplest commands you can issue from a terminal window is to find out where you are in relation to your directory structure. This is accomplished by typing in PWD, which stands for Present Working Directory. From there, you'll be given a Unix-style directory listing. And if you compare that to the Windows XP variation, or a command prompt, you'll see that there are quite a number of similarities happening. First, in Unix, the top level of your hard drive is usually denoted by a forward slash. After that, we can see that we go into our users directory, followed by a subdirectory called JZ. And again, this is very similar to what's happening in Windows systems, because you start off with your C drive, and that's generally your top level hard drive, C colon backslash, documents and settings, and then another subfolder called JZ. So anyone who's ever opened a command prompt, this should look pretty familiar to you. The only difference is that they're using a forward slash instead of the backslash to separate the directory entries. If you want to view a listing of files and folders in your present working directory, you would issue the command ls. This will give you a simple unformatted column view of files and folders in your directory. And as you can see, this may not be the most useful way of viewing things because there's no way to distinguish the difference between what's a file and what's a folder. So if you want to add a little bit of formatting to this, you would just type in ls-capital-f. And here you'll see that it'll add forward slashes to everything that's a folder and just leave the normal files by themselves. One thing to know about these Unix commands and their switches is that capitalization matters. So if I were to repeat the same command with a lowercase f, nothing happens. So make sure that you type it in and you capitalize properly or else unexpected results may occur. A more useful way of listing files and folders from the command line is to add the L listing. And this is equivalent to viewing things in a column view from a finder window. Here it'll give you extended attributes. Um, it'll list the uh, permissions for a given file, the size of it, the file creation date, and things of that nature. So it's very similar to just viewing things in this type of view in column view in the finder. And finally, if you want to look at every file in a directory, you would just add the optional switch ls-al and this will show hidden files and in Unix all hidden files are hidden with a period in front so this is a hidden file and or actually this is a hidden directory and once again you can tell it's a directory because it says D standing for directory and it's the first letter and this is a hidden directory called Mac ports so you can also get into that as well and hide files and hide directories simply by appending a period in front of the file name or directory name. 
changing directories, renaming files, and copying files is very similar and in some cases identical to what you're familiar with from the command prompt. In this example, I want to create a folder on my desktop called test. So what I'll do is I'll change directory to my desktop by issuing cd desktop and here I'll create a new folder and we'll do that by issuing mkdir so make directory test and as you can see test has magically appeared on my desktop now let's say I want to uh, copy some files I can do that by opening another terminal window and from here let's say I want to copy things from a folder I already have so I'll change directory to my mozconfig uh, folder and what I can do now is I can copy these files directly from the command line into that folder without dragging and dropping. So to do that, I'll issue the copy command with cp and I'll go copy my camino.mozconfig file to my home directory forward slash desktop forward slash test. And now what we'll see is if I go into the finder in my test folder, my Camino Moss config has been copied over miraculously from um, this folder here. So without doing any type of dragging and dropping, just simply issuing the commands, I copied a file from this folder here into my test folder on the desktop. If you want to move files from the command line, you would do so by using the MV command. And in this example, what I want to do is I want to move this G4 Camino Moz config over to my test file. So from the command line, I would just start off by going mv space g4 Camino dot Moz config, and I'll type the path that I want to move this to. So in this instance, my home directory forward slash desktop forward slash test. And as you can see, in my finder window, it's magically moved from my mos config over to my test directory on my desktop. Renaming files takes advantage of the move command also. And the overall idea is we want to move from an old file name to a new file name. So in this example, I want to change camino.mozconfig to old.mozconfig. And very simply, from the command line, we type in mv config, and we'll move that to our new file name. And we'll call that old.mozconfig. Pressing enter and going back to the finder, we see that our file name has indeed changed from Camino to old. Finally, to delete files from the command line, we use the rm command. Now, you should exercise extreme caution and know exactly what you're doing before executing this command because once you hit enter, there is no going back. Your files will not move to the trash and because we are working directly with the file system, it's very difficult and in some cases almost impossible to recover files after you delete it from the command line. So with that said, we'll do a listing of all the files in our test directory and let's just say we want to delete a file. So we go rm and cvs firefox.mozconfig. We'll press enter. We'll relist our file contents and we'll see that cvs firefox no longer exists. Now, if you want to remove an entire directory altogether, what we can do is we can change directory to our desktop. So cd two periods back to our desktop and now we can just simply go rm-r. The R switch stands for recursive and what this will do is it'll first delete all of the files inside the subdirectory and then finally the directory itself. So recursive will delete everything all at one time. So rm-r space test. Press enter and we'll see that on our desktop, our test directory has disappeared. And once again, it's not in the trash either, so it's gone for good. That's about it. Peace.